An ad from the group opposing the initiative, no, on 1631. I-1631's energy tax... Okay, right away, there's something to correct here. 1631 technically proposes a fee, not a tax. The difference, with a tax, the money can be spent by the government on whatever it wants. With a fee, the money has to go to specific causes, in this case, improving environmental health. Would increase consumer prices for gasoline, electricity, natural gas, and heating fuel. It's likely that this is true, though not because the fee is imposed on consumers. The fee is imposed on companies who can, and probably will, decide to pass that cost along to the consumers. Costing families more than $400 in the first year. All right, now that number comes from a study from a private consulting group. Now, with studies like these, you got to be cautious. They're trying to predict huge economic outcomes based on one initiative. There are just so many variables, it's impossible to say how accurate this will be. Also worth noting, the study was paid for by the No campaign. Increasing automatically every year with no cap. So again, the impact on consumers is hard to predict accurately, but it is true the fee increases every year. As for the cap, well, there sort of is one. The measure says the fees will stop rising after the state reaches certain emissions goals. Though, one, that's obviously pretty lofty, and two, even at that point, the fees can still adjust with inflation. But 1631 exempts many of Washington's largest polluters. This gets complicated. You see in the ad it refers to this coal plant here in Centralia as exempt, and that's true. But that's because the plant is scheduled to shut down in a few years, and the writers of the initiative were worried that imposing the fee on the plant could slow down that closing process. Next, Next there are a number of other exemptions, too many to get into right now, but here's the gist. The No campaign sent us this list of emitters they point out are exempt. The Yes campaign told us their reasoning. They argued that most of these emitters are creating pollution from wood, and that wood is actually considered carbon neutral because of all the carbon trees removed during their lifetimes. Consumers would pay billions for no significant reductions in greenhouse gas emissions. So we've talked about the consumer part already. As for the emissions part, here's the story. The initiative does set specific emissions goals, and it creates a review process to make sure those goals are met. But the No campaign argues that process doesn't carry a lot of weight and can't result in the fee being repealed. All right, that's enough on this ad. On now to the other side. Seen these false ads? Right off the bat, just want to say it's too much of a blanket statement to call the ads false. We just went through one right now, and some of the stuff was true and some wasn't. Let's take a closer look. Five out-of-state oil companies are spending $21 million to pay for them. This is true, although there are actually more than five oil companies donating right now. There are also some farm groups that have donated much smaller amounts. And all told, the campaign has raised $28 million now. It's also worth mentioning the Yes campaign has raised $15 million of its own, including a million each, from Michael Bloomberg and Bill Gates. Here's what they don't say. Big Oil wants you to keep paying for asthma and heart disease instead of using their big profits to clean up our air and water. I mean... You can't really fact check claims like that. It's broad, it's not supported by any specific evidence, and it purports to know what the opposition's intents are. Moving on. See, 1631 makes them pay when they pollute. It's a sensible plan to improve our health and help create 40,000 jobs. So that 40,000 number there, that comes from a study done by the University of Massachusetts. And like we've talked about already, ambitious studies like that, you can't say whether they're true or not because they're predictions of the future. All right, now that concludes our fact checking for this whole week. Less than two weeks to go until election day. Mark, Whitney. All right.